Okay, so this video is going to talk about strong and weak acids and bases. And there are seven strong acids that you should know. I put stars by two of them because they're less common. But the ones you definitely should know are HCl, HBr, HI, HNO3, and H2SO4. And what makes them strong acids is that when you stick them in water, they will um, completely dissociate. So 100% dissociation. So what that means, if I were to put HCl in water, it is going to totally break up into H plus ions and Cl minus ions. Therefore, if I have a solution of one molar HCl, that means I have a solution of one molar H plus ions, because all of these are going to be converted into these ions over here. I would draw it as a one-way arrow, showing it basically goes to completion. The same thing is true for the strong bases. Strong bases, when you put them in water, they will completely dissociate to form hydroxide ions, and the most the common strong bases you should know are the alkali metal hydroxides. So these are soluble um, ionic hydroxide compounds. So sodium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. When you stick those in water, since all my alkali metals are um, totally soluble, when you stick, for example, sodium hydroxide in water, it will totally dissociate to sodium ions and hydroxide ions. And again, that's why we call it a strong base. So if you had a one molar solution of sodium hydroxide, that means you have one molar hydroxide ions, because all of this is being converted into this. The other example would be your alkaline earth metal hydroxide. So uh, these are your heavy alkaline earth metals, meaning leaving out magnesium. So it's calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, barium hydroxide. These also count as strong bases. They might not have the best solubility. So these might not be very soluble, but the parts of them that do dissolve will totally break up into ions. Every, all other acids that are not strong, they are weak acids. So if you see, for example, a formula looks like this, HNO2, it kind of looks like an acid because I've got H in front of it. Uh, it's not one of my strong acids, so I'm going to assume it's going to be a weak acid. And weak acids are things that do not totally dissociate when you stick them in water. Typically, they experience less than 5% dissociation. So uh, when I show what happens when I put a weak acid in water, I'm going to write it as an equilibrium system um, because it is not a one-way arrow. So not all of this will turn into this. You'll have a little bit of back and forth. In fact, since less than 5% of it dissociates at equilibrium, I'm going to have a lot more of these present in my solution than these right here. Hence, when you uh, um, look at a K value for the dissociation of a weak acid in water, you will find the K value is less than 1 meaning it's reactants favored. So at equilibrium, you're going to have more of this form of your acid than the ionized form. And an example of weak bases, um, a common example of a weak base would be NH3. So um, a lot of these nitrogen competing compounds can act as weak bases. And if you look at the chemical formula, or the Lewis dot structure, I should say, it looks like this. And the way that these act as weak bases is because of this lone pair right here tends to be attractive to the hydrogen on water. So when you stick uh, NH3 in a solution of water, it is going to come along and is going to steal that hydrogen from the water. And when you take a hydrogen from water, if you look at what's left behind, if I remove this hydrogen and put it over here, um, now I have a hydroxide ion. Okay, so your NH3 will take a hydrogen from water, leaving behind hydroxides and creating NH4+, which we call the conjugate acid of that weak base. So looking at acid and base strength, talking about these conjugate acid-base pairs, uh, this right here is a weak acid, HNO2. Uh, the ion that is left over after HNO2 dissociates, we call the conjugate base. And as the strength of your acid increases, the strength of the conjugate base decreases and vice versa. So if you are looking at, I guess I should erase the word weak here because they're not all weak. So if you're looking at your acid, for example, HCl is a strong acid, so it totally dissociates. And the conjugate base of HCl would just be the Cl minus ion. HNO2 is a weak acid, its conjugate base is NO2 minus, 
HCN is a weak acid, CN minus is its conjugate base. For strong acids, so this is very strong, has a very large K value, the conjugate base is so weak, we can essentially think of it as being neutral. So it's really not even a base at all, because it's so weak. Um, when you have a weak acid, its conjugate base will be a weak base. And the weaker the acid, uh, the better the conjugate base you will have. So notice how uh, a K value relates to the acid strength. So HNO2 has a K value of 4 times 10 negative fourth. HCN has a K value of 4 times 10 negative 10. That means HNO2 is going to dissociate more when you stick it in water. So HNO2 is a stronger um, weak acid than HCN is. So if you go and look at their conjugate bases, you can use their KB value to judge how good of a base it is. Uh, the KB value for NO2 minus is 2 times 10 negative 11. The KB value for CN minus is 2 times 10 negative 5. So notice CN minus is better base than NO2 is, and HNO2 is a better acid than HCN is. So the stronger the acid, um, the weaker the conjugate base, and vice versa. And a related concept is there's this equation, you know, Ka times Kb equals Kw. Kw is the dissociation constant for water. It's 1 times 10 to the negative 14. And um, this works for a, if you take an acid and its conjugate base pair, um, their K values, when you multiply them, you'll get Kw. So you can try multiplying these together, you'll notice you'll get 10 to the negative 14. So this is another way of seeing as the strength of your acid increases, uh, the strength of the conjugate base will decrease. It's an inverse relationship there. So if one goes up, the other one must go down. So that's a little bit on weak and strong acids and bases.